make sure that we really keep track of what the weather is doing, what kind of systems are moving in, is it gonna be colder, can we expect snow? So awesome. Okay guys, so at work here, taking a little break. I've uh, been doing a lot of phone calls and things. <sighs> Gonna take a second to uh, start lighter pack. This is where all of my trips really start getting planned. Lighter pack makes it really easy to plan your trip out by selecting different gear. If you know that the weather is gonna be in the 40s and you wanna bring your 30 degree sleeping bag, you can grab that, drag it over, and you can already have your gear weighed and all of the stats written out on it, all of your notes, and just drag and drop, and kinda just start planning your trip that way. I'm at square one here. So I'm at the point where I can't put anything down on my ladder pack because I don't know what the conditions are gonna be like. So what I'm gonna do, we're going to Zion National Park, and I'm gonna get a weather report for uh, November 2019. And we're about a month out now, so this is really where we have a better idea of what the weather's gonna be like when we get there. I'm gonna look at the forecast first. So days are gonna be short, ample sunlight to explore, yada yada. Temperatures are gonna be around 64. The average low is gonna be 37 degrees Fahrenheit. There's lots of data available to you online make use of the internet. You know, this is kind of a historical data driven graph here. Um, so you can see what the low is typically going to be. But now what I really want to do, um, what I've done in the past, is I absolutely want to go in and find out what the record low is for that day, just so that I know the coldest it's ever been at this place at this time of year was this. And we're gonna figure that out here. So record low record low temperature in Zion National Park, type that in. The highest temperature ever recorded is a maximum of 155 degrees. And here it says, in the winter, daytime highs are rarely less than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very nice uh, hiking weather. We found what we're looking for here, and we're gonna verify this uh, with other websites. We're gonna look for farmer's almanac type stuff so that we have you know, more sources and more data to compare to see what the record lows are. But you can see there for November, the record low is six degrees Fahrenheit, that's zero. So I know with my 30 degree sleeping bag and my uh, 50 degree synthetic quilt, my puppy quilt that I wear, so poncho style, coupling those two things with my puppy pants and puppy jacket, I know that I'm gonna be all right. Down to negative 11 is the coldest I went with a foam sleeping pad, my 30 degree sleeping bag, my 50 degree redown quilt that I have from uh, hammock gear and wearing a beanie. So I know that probably this uh, November low of six degrees Fahrenheit is more than likely towards the end of the month, you know, closer to December. Here's another good website that I just found. It's called timeanddate.com. Sorry for the shaky camera. You can see it's graphed out. These are historical lows, averages, and things. So we're gonna look at our dates, September 2nd through September 8th, and see what the weather holds for us, uh, historically speaking. So we see that last year's weather from the 3rd to the 8th, which is a chunk of our trip there. We've got lows in the 50s going into the lower 40s. So a 30 degree sleeping bag seems fine, but we have to account for possible changes between seasons. So we go further into the month of November and we start seeing that the lows start creeping down into the 30s. So just in case there's any weather abnormalities or any cold fronts that come in, we're at a little bit higher elevation, we're gonna plan for those lows in the 30s. We're gonna check that again in the future and we're gonna watch the forecast as things progress and we get closer to our hiking date and just make sure that we really keep track of what the weather is doing, what kind of systems are moving in, is it gonna be colder, can we expect snow? Um, again, in the beginning of November in the Southwest, from what I've been reading, it seems that it is not likely to get snow. 
uh, but rain showers are common. And if we have temperatures dropping down into the 40s and there's rain involved, then that can really change the circumstances of your hike. It's probably one of the most dangerous conditions I've ever been in was uh, being out in the 100 mile uh, with my 30 degree gear and uh, getting soaked uh, over you know a nine hour hiking day where it's raining all day and it's 44 degrees and just bone chillingly cold because of all the wetness and humidity. So we're going to be pretty careful going forward as you should always be and uh, just keep a very solid idea of what's going on with that weather. Again, sorry for the noise, but I am at work. I'm kind of printing stuff out while I'm doing this and kind of taking a short break to talk to you guys and you know the printing job that I'm doing it's a big job so I just load the printer every once in a while. So we know now that uh, 30 degree insulation for sleeping insulation is going to be on the lower side um, of our range. It's going to be you know marginally adequate. Usually you want to be prepared for temperatures that could be as low as 20 degrees colder than what you see on the forecast. But then with the potential for 25 mile per hour winds um, on any given date in that November range, based off of last year's data, historical data, we have some ideas about what we need to include in our gear list. So I'm gonna go back here to this lighter pack and I'm gonna start dragging over some of our equipment options. I've lost my tripod somehow, so I hope the angle's not too bad. Uh, so what we're gonna do, uh, going off this weather that we had here, and the low 30s, uh, we know what we're gonna need to bring. We've got the wind, we know we need uh, a couple things for that. So let's go in here and make this new one for the Southwest trip 2019. We're gonna go to the Grand Canyon as well for maybe day hikes or an overnight if we can get a permit. But the primary concern is spending time in Zion. So we're gonna plan for that mostly. First, what I like to do is organize things by gear type. So uh, you're gonna see, I go to the current SUL kit. I'm gonna copy this. Uh, we're going to do Warn, Sleep, Shelter, Communications, Pack, Water. Warn, Sleep, Shelter, Communications, Pack, Water. And that saves automatically. We can go back to the current kit. Carried Clothing, Tools, Kitchen, Diddy Sack. And I recommend you set up your stuff this way as well. Tools, kitchen, ditty sack. We're just gonna do a miscellaneous category. Okay, that's where everything else goes. So those are our categories. Those are the primary categories. Everything that I bring with me can be scheduled into those. Once I have an existing list, I check um, against my previous lists so that I don't miss out on important equipment. I don't skip out on any weight stuff, um, like, you know, little stuff like cards, wallet, glasses, cloth, toothbrush. It's very handy to have an existing list. If you're making your first list now, be as thorough as you can, and that way you can go back later on future trips and make sure that you aren't forgetting things that you've decided are essential while you're out there. Sleeping bag, my REI Flash 30. I'm gonna drop that there. As you can see, it puts the weight in, and we have the totals and we start building our picture of what our pack is gonna look like by category. And you can change the weight from pounds to ounces to grams, whatever you like. All right, so what we're gonna do is continue dragging things over here. We said we needed the sleeping bag. So that 30 degree is there, that's beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and do the Appalachian Ultralight Balloon Pack. And we're gonna put that under pack. We're gonna start with that and uh, we're gonna try to pack everything up in it. We're only doing four nights in Zion, five days total probably. Uh, so not gonna have to carry more than, you know, five days of food. And it, uh, I know that that's gonna fit my 30 liter, uh, my ultralight bag. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, some 10 steaks, probably, yeah. I think I can take those on the plane. So we want the groundhogs. So we're probably gonna want to do one, two, three, four, up to five tent stakes, but might narrow it down to four. We're just gonna put five in there to get an idea of what's going on right now. We see the socks here. We're gonna pull these over. I'm gonna bring my favorite socks on this hike for sure. The smartphone, we're gonna put it under communications. And then we're gonna need the charger and all that. And then 
toothbrush and toothpaste. Might be a little heavier listed here, but uh, we're gonna put that in the ditty sack category. Uh, some toilet paper, 29 grams of toilet paper. <laughs> this is just general weights, um, what they were when I weighed them at the time. This needs some guy lines as well under shelter. There we go. We have our head net for bugs. That is what I use as a ditty sack. I don't know if the bugs are gonna be bad, but I'm gonna assume so. And I'd rather be carrying that extra 17 grams than tearing my eyes out trying to get at the bugs flying into them. Uh, the normal water filter setup that we've done before. So we're gonna be able to filter our water. Plastic water bottle, like a smart water bottle with the sport cap for a clean bottle. One clean, one dirty for two liters of carried water. We're gonna drop the food bag I used on the AT for now. We are going to say that I'm going to find my <laughs> rechargeable flashlight. I can't bring a pocket knife on the plane and I'm not gonna check my hiking pack. So we're not gonna carry a knife this trip or we will pick one up. That's a small Swiss Army style knife when we get there. Well, there's also the possibility of sending the knife to myself in the mail, but that's another thing to do on the day we arrive. So definitely gonna bring the inflatable pillow, some sleep system, inflatable pillow. We're gonna need a gallon Ziploc for our trash, gallon trash bag. And then here we can go to our wearable clothing. So we're gonna start building that up as well. Here's the running shirt. Definitely gonna be some sandy terrain. So we're gonna wanna bring our spandex dirty girl gaiters. Uh, we're gonna have to include the weight of the light charger as long as we are contemplating bringing the Olight. Uh, glasses cleaning cloth is nice to have. Put that in miscellaneous. If we can find the backup water kit, we'll bring that as well. Got eight treatment tablets in there, just in case my filter breaks, I can still have up to eight liters of clean water to get me to safety. And a uh, spare O-ring in case it falls out at a water source and I lose it so that my filter isn't useless. And then we gotta count the weight of the bag that the toilet paper goes in, of course. I don't know if I still have my mini roll of duct tape. We'll throw that in there as well. Uh, here we go, we've got a better weight for the guy line cordage for my shelter. So we're gonna go up here and drop that. This is like the 50 foot length. Uh, that's for hammock setups and stuff like that for ridge lines. Um, a water scoop is essential. We're gonna bring a little uh, small thin bottom of a cut off water bottle to be able to scoop water out of pooling sources, small little creeks and things, water dripping off of rocks, very, very handy. It can be extremely hard to get water into your water bottle otherwise. I'm gonna bring the UV buff. That is gonna go into carried clothing, absolutely. No cheating here. I'm gonna have to bring a watch as well. So I'll put that here. Cards in my wallet, ditty sack. My running shorts, but I might wear my kilt. If I end up wearing my kilt, I'll go back and change this. Trail runners, I'm not having a great time with my Solomons on long distances. The boxer briefs as well. Gotta wear my glasses. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to bring my trekking poles on the plane. I'd really like to be able to. Uh, they are kind of broken down. I might have to replace them. I'm gonna bring my favorite hat, of course. Put that right at the top. Be funny to organize this by, you know, head to toe. Maybe I will later. Usually it's by weight. And then poncho tarp, my favorite piece of gear. That is gonna go with my shelter system. That's gonna be my shelter. And I'm gonna combine that with my baby sack. Cerium LT. Puffy jacket. It's very important to have a puffy jacket in the type of conditions that we've been talking about here. I'm thinking about bringing my synthetic puffy pants, um, so we'll put that there. If I do bring the synthetic puffy pants, the down puffy jacket, 30 degree quilt, it starts getting into the 40 liter range for my pack. So we'll have to pack up the ultralight pack and see if it'll fit. I don't really wanna be messing around. We're going for safety here first. Uh, safety and comfort always come first before weight, so we're going to keep that in mind. Bug mesh hooded light bivy, there we go, to shelter under poncho tarp. Starting to get a pretty good idea of what our gear list looks like. You see how quickly it comes together. <clears throat> so normally I would have a beacon on a longer hike, um, GPS beacon. It's a good safety device. Uh, my friend is bringing one, so we're going to make her carry it. We're going to make Pancake carry that. 
<laughs> we are going to bring a sip pad. I've done it before where I haven't, and uh, it is awful. Oh, here's our dirty water bottle. We'll put this in here instead of doing two of those. Four days, we're going to be filming. So unfortunately, probably going to have to bring the power bank under tools, um, but we're going to put it under miscellaneous instead. Fortunately, that is another 6.35 ounces that is necessary for filming. And we're going to throw in the windbreaker. I'm probably going to be purchasing carried clothing. So you've seen here in about 30 minutes, we've gone ahead and built a pretty comprehensive list of gear that we're going to take with us to Zion and the Grand Canyon. All right. So right now we're looking at a total weight of 10.83 pounds. That's the total weight. We're gonna go through and mark our clothing as worn because it's gonna be on our bodies at all times. Then we bring it down and we see that the backpack weight is here. It's gonna be 7.11 pounds. It's pretty respectable with three pounds of gear worn, including the weight of the shoes, hat, glasses, watch, etc. Sleep system, we are missing our inflatable sleeping pad. Our full length inflatable sleeping pad. And hopefully the patch kit holds out on that. It was patched uh, in summer of 2018. This is pretty much the completed list, 7.87 pounds. And there may be some little items in there. I might include some medication like uh, some naproxen sodium for if my knee acts up after my fall. Uh, where I slipped going into Harper's Ferry in the rain off a little ledge there. As you can see, it didn't take a lot of time because I have all this gear already in my lists, um, my other lists from my other trips. This is something that you do, you know, get a little food scale or a postal scale. A uh, cheap one is fine just to get an idea. Um, not too cheap, I'd say $15, $20 range is going to get you a pretty good product. Um, maybe as much as 40 if you want to be laser accurate. And again, I'll go through this again um, in the future and add and remove things as I decide exactly what I want to bring. Maybe I want to bring my synthetic jacket instead of my puffy jacket. So like I said, um, kind of dragged everything over here, get an idea of it's really nice on lighter pack. You can see what most of your weight is going towards. Worn, we're including the weight of shoes and trekking poles and things that are going to be in our hands and on our bodies. Clothes add up a lot, so that makes sense. Next heaviest is going to be uh, sleep. And what I'll typically do is I'll go through and I'll drag these out and organize them by weight um, so that the chart lines up and it's biggest to smallest in a circle clockwise. Um, that's something that I like to do to have it all clean and organized. See, the kitchen is very light. What we're gonna do is just load it up with no cook food. I don't want to have to carry a stove on this trip and we're not allowed to have fires. So there's really not much reason to be carrying a pot and all kinds of cooking implements. It's just extra weight that um, is gonna get in the way. So we're just gonna stick with a no cook. Uh, it makes it easier, it's four days. There's plenty of good stuff to eat that doesn't require cooking. So guys, that's just to give you an idea of the preliminary research that goes into a hiking trip like this. Um, sorry, I was working at the same time that I was uh, talking to you guys about it. I'm trying to do two things at once. I've been having a hard time finding enough trouble. Blah. I've been having trouble finding enough time to get to this kind of stuff and do videos for you guys while I've been at work and coming home and being tired. So just figured that while I had a little bit of time here um, doing this printing job and answering the phone today, that it'd be a good time to uh, sneak in a little video and show you guys the beginnings of my research and how I start picking out my gear list. Um, gotten pretty good at it over the last few years. Um, built a lot of kits for a lot of different scenarios and uh, a lot of different little trips. It's not going to be as streamlined for you if you're doing this on lighter pack your first time, but get that scale. Um, get like a postal scale, food scale, weigh everything individually, plug it in, and once you have it in there, you've got it for life, 
you can scroll through. Don't do what I did and have a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> I need to go through and clean out my uh, equipment options here because there's a lot of theoretical things that I was messing with for Gearless. But go in and you can make it much easier on yourself uh, to sort through your equipment and plan out your trips in the future. Uh, you can leave little list descriptions uh, with notes to yourself about things you need to do, or if, if you wanna share your link with somebody, you can leave notes about the items that are in there and why you organized it the way that you did. It's a very handy website. Um, it's where 90% of my trips start. Um, I rarely go on a significant trip without making a gear list just to make sure that I'm not getting myself in trouble for getting an essential piece of gear. I'm gonna check this list against my old lists, uh, especially my you know, current SUL kit that is the most carefully crafted list that has everything on it and make sure that I didn't miss anything important, uh, like a toothbrush or whatever, which I know I didn't, but. So yeah, next up will probably be actually packing up the bag, seeing what fits in the bag, and making a determination as to whether the bag that I've chosen in this gear list is going to fit all of these belongings. I think it might get a little tight. Uh, four days of food, it could work. If it's gonna be more food, if we're gonna be carrying a lot more water, then I want the size and the hip belt afforded to me by the Hyperlite 40 liter Southwest Cuban, which is also at this point water resistant because it's seen a lot of time on trail and um, it's been beaten up a little bit. But um, so that's pretty much it guys. That's how I start my trip planning. Um, just kind of looking at the weather first and foremost. And then next I'm gonna be looking at water conditions and just getting an idea of how much capability do I need as far as carrying water goes. If you have any questions about any of the gear on this list, uh, you can go back and watch my gear list review videos where I talk about the equipment that I brought with me on the last 660 or so miles of the Appalachian Trail in 2018 in the summer. I have vlogs from that time. You can see me using that equipment, um, but also I go through each piece of equipment and talk about the category of equipment generally, why I like it, what its uses are, its limitations. So those reviews and those resources are available to you on my channel. Also got some blog posts where I talk about stuff like that. If you want to go check out the Little Life Happy blog, uh, it's littlelifehappy.com. I've got posts about how I set up my tarps and things like that. So look forward to the next video. Probably going to be refining this gear list just a little bit more. I'll give you updates on that and uh, any other trip planning stuff that's coming out. We'll uh, see what's going on there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Songbird Ultralight, and we'll see you in the next video.